Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be discussing a new unusual study and a new mystery that might resolve a lot of other mysteries. Today we'll talk about what are known as geodes and something that might resolve the problem with dark energy while at the same time explaining a few anomalies we've observed when black holes collided. Let's talk about this and welcome to the math. So in the last few years, we were able to discover quite a lot of really cool things. For one, we actually got to take a picture of a black hole of a galaxy known as M87, and this black hole even has a name now, it's known as Pelehi. At the same time, we've even observed things like stars being um, eaten or being absorbed by black holes, and we've seen many different black hole and neutron star collisions as well. All of this is something we've theoretically expected to happen, but finally we got to observe them using various new techniques and various new observatories out there. But at the same time there are still a lot of unanswered questions. One of these unanswered questions is of course related to the so-called dark energy. The idea behind which I can explain to you very easily by basically taking a look at this simulation here. Today we understand that our universe is expanding. But for some reason, it's also accelerating its expansion, and it's something that we are having trouble explaining. As an explanation, we've proposed this idea of dark energy, this unusual, I guess you can call it substance, that exists in the universe that's causing this acceleration, that's kind of pushing things apart more and more and more. And it's something that we've observed, but we just can't really explain it. At the same time, when it comes to black hole collisions, we've also seen quite a lot of them. But even the first collision we've ever seen was a little bit unusual. As a matter of fact, we've predicted these collisions to first of all be a little bit more rare, but at the same time we've expected the actual black holes to be much smaller, much less massive. The collisions we've observed were basically between black holes that were about 30 masses of the sun, and that's way more than we predicted, and it's something we couldn't really understand or explain. In other words, just to help you visualize this, even though we predicted it to be sort of like this, this is a typical black hole we thought we would see, we instead saw something like this. Much larger, much more massive black holes colliding, forming an even bigger black hole. And this is something that we kind of have taken for granted now, because we've observed a lot of these relatively large uh, black holes, this is about 30 masses of the sun, but still, it's not really something we can explain theoretically. And so to try to explain all of this, uh, the two scientists uh, who published this paper decided to describe this in slightly different terms. They decided to combine ideas from the Soviet physicist who back in 1966, when he was much younger than you see on the picture here, proposed the idea that, well, maybe, just maybe, certain black holes can actually become dark energy chunks. And today we refer to these objects as geodes, which stands for generic object of dark energy. And the idea here, well, is kind of difficult to explain mathematically. As a matter of fact, uh, when I was reading this paper, there was so much math in it that I had to take a very long break and then come back and try to finish it. But in essence, imagine it's an object that instead of being a black hole is actually made out of this dark energy. And even though it sort of appears as a black hole from the outside, inside of it is a different story. Inside it's basically all just dark energy matter. Or I guess dark energy substance? Dark energy. And to try to explain all of this, the scientists in this paper propose that everything in the universe is essentially kind of connected. Basically the black holes and the dark energy, they all influence each other. And when these uh, geodes are created, they sort of start influencing the rest of the universe and pushing everything apart. And so in a sense, they are suggesting that there is an interconnection between these really small compact objects like black holes and more specifically geodes and the rest of the cosmos, the rest of the universe. And so as a consequence here, what this suggests is that the growth of the universe itself actually kind of dictates what happens to the stars when they die, if they become black holes or if they become geodes. And according to the scientists behind this paper, even if just one out of a hundred black holes is a geode, which might look something like this, and if just one of these black holes is a geode, 
it would be enough to explain the effects of dark energy that we're observing across the universe. And honestly, this is actually a pretty interesting discovery, or at least a pretty interesting theoretical mathematical analysis. So here, a single black hole as a geode is enough to explain what we're observing and enough to explain the anomalies we've seen in LIGO black hole mass detection. In other words, if two of these black holes collide and they're not really black holes, but they're geodes, they would produce the masses that were observed because according to them, if you were to look at these geos from a distance, from a faraway distance where these two geos collided, they would actually appear more massive than they really are. And so this is kind of how they explain both the anomalies in the LIGO detection and the so-called dark energy that they believe might be all connected to these unusual objects. These geodes would also kind of grow in size um, with the universe, uh, until basically the collision occurs. And so in a sense, these objects are literally like a connection to the rest of the universe. As the universe grows and expands even more, so do these geodes and of course their influence on the rest of the universe. But of course, this is all very theoretical right now. It's basically all mathematical even. There is unfortunately no actual evidence that this might be true. And even if these geodes do exist, we have no idea what's inside of them. We don't even know how to possibly find them because they would kind of appear like a typical black hole. As a matter of fact, the scientists behind this paper even suggested that maybe the Powehi black hole in the middle of M87 is also a geode. It would appear a lot more massive from this distance, but in reality it could be basically made of dark energy. But unfortunately there's really no proof. I'm sure it would probably take years before more scientists will join and try to analyze their study and also try to come up with maybe some observational proofs. For now, we don't really know, but of course it's a good explanation to both dark energy and the unusual observations that we've seen. If however the scientists behind this paper are correct in their assumption, it really means that maybe just maybe just one single black hole being a geode is enough to explain the effects we're seeing with dark energy. And it also means that this Soviet physicist was way ahead of his time in trying to explain something that we didn't even know existed back then. Because we've only realized dark energy might be a thing in 1998, but he came up with this idea back in 1966. But anyway, until we learn more or until we get more studies in regards to this idea, that's really it. If you'd like to try and read this and possibly test your math skills in trying to understand how all of this works, the link for this paper is in the description below. But for now, that's really it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about the universe and our understanding of it, or I guess in this case, our not understanding of it, because we're still not really sure what dark energy is. Once we learn more, I'll come back and talk about this. For now, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe even support this channel on Patreon because it actually does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye bye.